and all that's going on. I pray the Lord things can get settled down. I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, but well, I know you can intervene, and that's what we prayed here uh, last week about. And we just ask you, God, to, to do as you see fit, which I know that's what you'll do. I uh, thank you, God, that uh, you do hear our prayers. And we've had many prayer requests, God, that's gone up this week for different things. And we just ask, Lord, that you intervene in those as you see fit. Be with our church and help us, God, to stand strong. Help us to be true to you. Help us to keep our eyes focused and our hearts open, Lord, to what you want us to do in our walk with you. Again, we love you. We appreciate you. And all these, again, that's got things going on, tests, whatever it might be, I pray, Lord, you'll be with them. Let them get good results. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to, uh, I do not have an outline tonight. It's all different. But if you will, go to 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. And tonight, I want to talk to you on this subject, the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. So as you get there, when you get to 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, you tell me amen. 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 Anybody ain't found it, say, oh, me. <laughs> All right. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, it says this right here. It says, the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and keep you from evil. I thought about this morning as I, I, I was trying to, you know, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? I spoke, uh, have had a couple of hard messages here. And Sunday was one I was glad to get out of the full pit, which I told you it, it was tough. And then last Wednesday night, I kind of, I guess, was on my soapbox whining a little bit. But uh, I, I went ahead and uh, I just shared with you how my heart was. And as I was talking to God, I, uh, things just started happening. And I, I picked up uh, this right here. It's a piece of paper, and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. I tell you, it's over 20-something years old. And uh, I started reading it. It was something my mom had wrote, and it just said, the faithfulness of God. And that's why I put this title tonight, it's the faithfulness of God. I thought about other uh, verses. You don't have to turn to them, but 1 John 1 and 9, I know I used it last week. It says, if we, are, if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, again, that talks about the faithfulness of God. The first uh, one, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, it said he's faithful to establish. It. So, when it's talking about God's faithfulness, and it said establish right there, it just means mature you or grow you or make you into that Christian you need to be. So that's what it's talking about. And as God grows you, he's able to keep you. And, I'm, and when you fail to grow in Christ, this is just my analogy, I, is this right here. When you fail to grow with Christ and allow him to establish you, that's when you mess up. That's when things start happening. And, and that's why we have to continue to grow. Another one that I like is this. It's another very familiar that talks about the faithfulness of God. You, you know it as soon as I start reading it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, No temptation has ever overcome you. I mean, excuse me. No temptation has overtaken you. Not overcome, but overtaken. That is not common to man. And it says, God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But this is what I like about it. It says, But with the temptation." Well, what you're getting tempted with, that temptation that is coming along also makes a way of escape that you're able to bear. What's the escape? Sometimes you got to run from it. Sometimes you, you got to quit listening to it. And other times you got to quit participating in it. So he makes a way of escape. So God is faithful to do that. And then in Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. That's talking about the faithfulness of God. Amen. And if there's anything that this world needs to know is the faithfulness of God. We, we, we as Christians, we need to keep reminding ourselves about the faithfulness of God. And you say, well, preacher, I know God's faithful, but you couldn't tell that by the look on a lot of people's face in this day and time. As I said last week, people were saved. I said that they were depressed, 
And I say that they are discouraged. And, and do this test. The next, next time you go to Angels, the next time that you go to Walmart, the next time you go to a store, you look and see if anybody gives you eye contact. You walk through those stores now, not hardly anybody gives anybody else any eye contact. And why is that? A lot of them are scared, discouraged, and uh, just uh, confused on what's going on. So I, I'm just trying to say, we need to keep telling ourselves that God is faithful, and we need to keep reminding people that God is faithful in this day and time. Uh, and it makes me feel bad that I've had to pop out a couple of uh, uh, hard messages, but again, God's faithful. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. The Bible shows us all the way through time and time again about how God has been faithful. I thought about Abraham, how he, uh, you know, God said, uh, Abraham, I want you to move and you go to a place and I'll show it to you. Well, Abraham was faithful and did that, but God in return was faithful to him and he made Abraham a great nation. And we know that is, the, is Israel. And we know that Israel, God was always faithful to Israel. I think about how uh, when they come out of Egypt, you know, how God was faithful. Well, when they come out, you know, how God, let's just say, uh, how he protected them. You know, Pharaoh and all of them come after him. We know how God, they didn't even have to fight. That God opened up the Red Sea and then closed it in on them. We know how God protected them time and time again. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's the faithfulness of God to Israel. But he was also faithful to them as they got up every morning. They were able to go out there and get manna. Now, we don't eat manna, but how many of you get up every morning you got something in your, in your uh, cupboard, your cabinets? Amen. That's the faithfulness of God. You could be living in some third world country and, and getting a cup of soup or a cup of rice every once in a while, but God has always provided. He does that. I, I think about how, uh, how he provided clothes back in there. 40 years. Can you imagine having the same clothes for 40 years? My goodness, you'd be in style, out of style, in style. <laughs> but 40 years. 40 years, the same clothes, they didn't wear out. 40 years, they wore the same shoes. I mean, they just grew with their foot. 40 years, their foot, feet didn't swell. Can I get an amen on that? I mean, that's what God did, the faithfulness of God. The whole time that they were being punished for what they had done, God was being faithful to them while they were out in the desert. And I want us to understand, God is going to be faithful to you and I when we're out in the desert, or no matter what's going on, God is always faithful. And that's what this world needs to know. That's what the church needs to be proclaiming. That's what preachers need to be preaching, is the faithful of God. I think also about oh, Elijah. He, he, he was faithful. And I'm not going to go all into that. You know, he soaked his sacrifice three times. He had faith in God, man. Got through the fire then, lapped it up, and they all believe there's no other God but that God. Faithfulness of God. Yeah. Let's turn to another little verse and very familiar. Everybody can probably quote it. Psalms 23. And mm -hmm. Let's listen to David. He talks about the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. And listen to his next words. Anybody know what that is? I shall not want. Now, did, did you believe that he was a satisfied customer? That he, he, he was knew that God was faithful? He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He didn't say out in an old dirt field. He said, He leadeth me beside still waters, not some old stingy, deck, uh, old dingy water, but still waters. He said that he restored his soul. Has God ever restored your soul? He's faithful about doing that. You can get down hard, you can get down now, but God can restore it. That's what he said, and, and David had that many times. He said, well, you be in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God ain't going to lead you in the wrong place. He's always faithful to lead you in the right direction. Now, you might be like me. Instead of being a sheep, we billy goats, and we go in a different direction. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff comfort me. Everybody sitting here today most likely has walked through the valley of the shadow of death. They've had someone to die, and, and if you would be honest and, and truthful. God walked with you every step of the way Amen. as a child of God. It says, I prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. They just said he, he's going to feed you up and you're going to run over. The oil is representing his spirit and he's faithful. I like for him to run me over every once in a while, don't y'all? You know, some people look at you, man, what's wrong with them? That, that, 
I, I'll squeal every once in a while or I'll cry. What's wrong with that person? I'm just running over. Ain't nothing about running over. I like to run over. Just makes you feel better. And then it says, Surely your goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. That's pretty faithful, all the days of your life. Not part of them. Both of them's going to follow you all the days of your life. And then I will dwell in the house of the Lord. What's that last word? That's faithful, ain't it? Didn't say for a short time. All that Psalms, David is talking about the faithfulness of God. The Bible shows us about the faithfulness. And, and if God was faithful to these people in this word of God, God will be faithful to you and I. And the only way that we can find out the faithfulness of God is to try God and allow God to prove himself. And that's why we prayed last week. I, well, I, I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm approving him. I'm going to see that he can do great things still and do wonderful things. God will see us through. God will see you through whatever it might be. I don't know what your challenge, in right, your challenge is right now or what our challenge is going to be maybe tomorrow or the next week or the next month. But all the way I do know this, he's faithful. How do I know he's faithful? That's why I got this right here. This was my mom's. None of y'all knew my mom or nothing about her. This is, I know it's got to be at least 23 years old because it talked about me being in fruit. And this is her testimony. I don't know if she gave it at a Gideon meeting. I don't know if she gave it to her Sunday school class. And I don't know if maybe the pastor had asked her to stand up and give a testimony. I don't know what it is. But I'm seeing it was written out right here. And let me tell you, my mom knew a whole lot more about me than I thought she did. <laughs> now she didn't go into detail, praise be to God. But as I read this, I understood what she was saying. She said, as I look back over my life, if it had not been for God's faithfulness, I would not be here today. For God had brought me through some lowly valleys, and he has helped me to climb some very high mountains. He saw me through one of the most darkest moments of my life when my first child died at, right after birth. But then he turned around and gave me a miracle, a child. Medical science said it would almost be impossible for me to get pregnant. I had only about a fourth of an ovary when my son, she's talking about me, was conceived. But she says, but I, like Hannah, promised him, God, if he would give me a child, I would give him back to him. I have never been more serious in my whole life. Then we learned when he was only eight months old that he had a blood disease, hypergammalomic anemic. I hope that's it. At that time, they were able to do were not able to do much with that condition. They told us if we could keep him alive till maybe he was eleven or twelve, he would possibly have a fifty percent chance of making it. He had to take gamma globulin shots, and they were terrible. Shots until he was twelve years old. All during that time, we about lost him with pneumonia several times. God is faithful. That's what she said. God is faithful. And today, he enjoys good health. I don't look like I'm sick now, do I? Amen? Amen. God's faithful. He, he, uh, he, he anointed me into her womb, and he healed me from what I had. I, I very, I don't believe in that, but very seldom do I get sick. I never knew a good day until after I was 12 years old. I say many years. I probably stayed in my life, I don't know, I guarantee you I stayed a year or two of my life in the hospital from one year old or birth up to 12. It says, and when he was eight years old, she goes and skips a little bit, he called me into his room one day. I saw that he was very disturbed about something. He said that God wanted him to be a missionary. I think I told y'all that Sunday. Eight years old, so I was right on the nose on that. 
And it said, and I prayed with him and talked with him and assured him, for now he needed to be faithful to God just one day at a time. And if God wanted him to be a missionary, he would provide everything he needed to be one. As he went into his teen years, this is where it gets bad. I'm gonna, I might skip some bit. <laughs> he, like all teenagers, not all, most teenagers she had, wanted to be accepted by the crowd. And he followed the wrong crowd. Even though he was not living for God, even though he was not living the way he knew to, there was one thing he did. He came to church. So that means you can live like the devil still come to church. That's what I was doing. I was living for the devil and I was still coming to church. That's a good place for people living for the devil to come to is the church. Yeah. Okay, where it was it? He was faithful to the church. Okay. But I knew, she went on to say, I knew he was not as committed as he once was. He married at a very young age to a very wonderful person. And their marriage has been good. But one thing happened. He became very materialistic. I told y'all that happened. She knew a whole lot about me. I never knew she knew I was materialistic. I thought I was just her little baby boy that done everything good. <laughs> and then she says, I talked to God about that. Let me see where I'm at. I, I talked to God about that. And God knew. I said, God, if anything's going to be done, you are going to have to do it. All I ever asked God for was to stay, for Steve to be what God wanted him to be. I saw God again begin to deal with him. It took several years before, before once again, he became, as that eight-year-old child, humble, ready to surrender to the will of God. But it was so important that you wait, that he waited on the will of God in his time. As you know, today, this is 23 years ago, that he was in fruitless preparing to preach the gospel. God has always provided. He has always been faithful to me. My health problems, and she had plenty. Financial problems that me and Floyd went through, through many a disappointments that we faced. Whatever God has, God has brought me through. He is faithful. And then she says, and he will be faithful to you. She comes and kind of ended it up and says, you may have some great challenge before you. You may be dealing with a child or a husband or some family member. But if you're faithful and you seek him, he'll be faithful and he'll answer you. I read that this morning and right after I got reading that, I got a phone call before eight o'clock. This guy that called me never called me. We just talked out in the open. Me and him's got a very close friend that we have been trying to help and praying for. He said, uh, Steve, I just want you to understand how faithful God's been. I needed to hear that word, faithful. I mean, that, that was a kicker right there. He said, this fellow that we've been trying to help uh, had been talking about how I had to give up on him. I'm not bragging on me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm going back to the faithfulness of God. I've been ready to give up on him a lot of times. But you can't give up. You just have to keep going because God's faithful. And then he went to this and said this. He said, I remember how faithful God was about me because he was talking about how wild this guy was and how wild he used to be. He said, there's a lot of people prayed for me and I got right. Faithfulness of God. And then for some reason, he said it again. He said, when me and Amy, when me and somebody got married, her daddy wasn't saved. For 30 years, she prayed for her daddy to get saved. 
He said, I was ready to tell her. He might as well just forget about it. It ain't going to happen. And he said, you know what? God's faithful. He got saved this year, and he's 70-something years old, and got baptized. Amen. I can shout. That's the faithfulness of God. Amen. Whenever you think God ain't faithful, you can look right now at everything that's going on. Well, God ain't faithful. God's faithful. God is faithful, man. That's what I need to remember. That's what you need to remember. That's what this world needs to remember. It doesn't matter how much hell you're fighting. It doesn't matter how much you're up against. You just remember God's faithful. He'll be there with you through it to the end. That's the God that we have. She said, as I come to an end, I added that. She said, remember the prophets how faithful he was to them. The woman at Samaria who her meal bucket never went dry or burned. The multitude that followed Christ, Jesus, and was fed. The saints that served his faith. And she said in my closing, 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithful, he will remain faithful and he will remain faithful for he cannot deny himself. So if God lives in you, he cannot deny himself. He will be faithful to you. And she ended it up on these words right here. Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Well, that's a God that we have. And I, aren't you glad you got a faithful God? And I guarantee you there's many stories right out here that you can say God has been faithful. Can't you, Jan? Right through cancer. Can't you, Judy? He's been faithful. The mama through her cancer, the mama through her falling, and all this. Everybody. There's not a one of us that cannot say that God has not been faithful to our lives. How do I know that? <laughs> Anybody here ever got a second chance? He's faithful. He's faithful. Well, that's my little bit to you tonight. And I love y'all. I did hey, that's 25 minutes. Y'all are, I already get a raise on that one. <laughs> God is faithful. <laughs> he, must have known, he must have known somebody had something to do tonight. <laughs> but sometimes it ain't how long the, the message is. It's what's in the message. Right. And all I want you to know, if you didn't get anything else, what did I tell you tonight? God is what? Faithful. Just remember that when you hit the wall or whatever it is. He is very faithful. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, I, I come to you. I thank you. For your words. I thank you for this morning as I sat there and I picked that piece of paper up that's been sitting on my desk, I don't know how long, and read it. And I thank you for that phone call that came right after that. Because again, Lord, that just did a, it stamped it. It put a seal of approval of how wonderful a God that we serve. I pray, Lord, tonight, I know out of the audience this large, somebody can be up against the wall right now. Somebody can have a wayward child. Somebody can have a, a financial situation. Somebody can have depression. Somebody can have whatever. But I hope they can see and experience, Lord, your Holy Spirit, your faithfulness, your love, your comfort that only you can get. Again, I pray for our nation. I pray for our president. I pray for our leaders. I pray for our church and our leaders and the folks that hold offices here and teach Sunday school and our deacons and our, our song people and, and everyone that has a part, God, I, I pray for them. Dear Lord, that we will be sharing just how wonderful a God that we have. Be with us. Bring us back Sunday. Keep us under your watch care. We love you and appreciate you. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are at liberty to go. Love you all.